Oh man, <clears throat> I've been thinking about this all day. The Corporate Transparency Act, rate cuts, high inflation. The more that I look at this, I don't think that this stuff just happened. I think it's a plan that's part of the new agenda. This is what I'm calling it. It may have another name, but essentially what I am seeing is people are being priced out of home ownership People are being, this is one of the things that's weird because like, look, take Tesla. Elon Musk made some dramatic price cuts of Tesla. He did it snap back, you know, snap, snap, snap. He made a lot of price cuts to Tesla. And he literally reshaped the electric vehicle market because now people who bought Teslas, say two years ago, you can get a brand new Tesla for less than what they want to sell their old Tesla for. So what are we seeing in this new agenda? We're seeing rapid inflation. And uh, I saw a comment that was saying that minorities were going to be the ones most hurt by the Corporate Transparency Act. I don't think that's true. I think there's a lot of non-minority people who are going to get hurt because they don't know about this. And this whole corporate transparency act and money laundering and all of these other things, I think it's just a, a scam. It's just a whole scam because this is about power and control. And, you know, I have been on the corporate tip for many, many years. And I've had multiple corporations. I've been able to do things. I remember the good old business credit days. Now, what are the good old business credit days? The good old business credit days were when you could form an LLC, get an EIN, and get things off of your EIN number. Like I had a Ford truck, had a $100,000 credit card that was based on my EIN number, nothing else. Those were the good old days of how to build credit, a business credit. And that all went away. You can no, you can no longer do. You could probably still get a vehicle EIN, but you have to build up your profile a certain way. And typically, the easiest vehicles to get would be vehicles that you need to work and make money. So, it's 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 really interesting how what we're seeing is these things that these were doorways, these things were open, these opportunities that were open. And they're like shutting down because I am really, really, and I, I saw some more comments that the Corporate Transparency Act was something that was done under Trump and agreed upon by both parties. Now, typically when both parties agree on something, this isn't, you know, this isn't something that's gonna disturb a voting block. Um, we have like 32 million businesses in a country of 330 million people. So the vast majority of people don't have businesses, don't have LLCs. So they just went ahead and put the clamps on it. So with this new agenda, we're going to have to be smarter because, um, I was one of those people who was pushing people to start LLCs and corporations because of how they benefited from me. And I will say, if you're one of those people who in the future will be harmed, I am terribly sorry because I was one of the people who was pushing corporations, pushing corporations. And now this little thing can become a huge hiccup in your corporate plans because I've been sitting down thinking about how I'm going to handle this. And literally, I may have to put um, a sticky note that every time I do something corporate, I got to readjust and fill out my form because I am not going to stop doing corporations. I'm not going to stop doing businesses. I'm just going to make myself adjust to this new business paradigm that we have with the United States government. So the new agenda is very, very interesting because who is it targeting? It's not targeting the top 10%. It's not targeting even the top 
The new agenda is targeting that 80% of people who are out here trying to start something, trying to create something, trying to build something. And this is who it's going to impact. These people who don't have the education or the knowledge to go ahead and to actually be able to handle these things. So we got a lot of stuff that we got to do. So we got to retrain, we got to reset, and we, because here's the thing. Ask yourself this question. Why are they putting up this Corporate Transparency Act now? 2017, this was before the pandemic. This was before PPP. This was before the EIDL loan. This was before all of that. So what is going on that has created this huge urge to correct something that in my opinion didn't need to be corrected. Now, once again, I haven't gotten around to doing my investigation of corporate crimes and stuff because the, the money laundering thing, like, let, let me give you some insights on money laundering. Let's say you're over here and you have an illegal business and you have this illegal business that generates a lot of cash. Let's say you're selling drugs and let's say your business makes a million dollars a month cash. So how do you clean this up? You go ahead and you start another business that has high cash deposits. You set up a business, you set up an LLC, you set up an EIN, you set all this up and then you just start depositing that cash in the bank and paying taxes on it so you can now clean up that money, so to speak. Um, the number of people who are going to give up a large percentage of their ill-gotten gains, I just don't think that there are that many folks who are doing this massive level of money laundering. I, I just don't because with taxes and corporate taxes, unless you, now, if they took that money, that illegally gotten money from selling drugs, and then formed a new business, got that business off the ground, and this business was actually making money, that's totally different. I don't think that these people are taking their ill-gotten gains in doing money laundering on this whole scale level because it's just it just goes against human nature it just really does um Ani, omni and the hellcat prime example he made 54 million dollars and he did not set up any of these fake corporations or any of this stuff so what we got to do is be smarter and we got to actually because um i'm just sitting here thinking i'm just sitting here thinking all right this, you know, because I started to look because I had people ask me about the Corporate Transparency Act and I, I just got around to really looking at it. And when I looked at it and I, when I saw how dark it was and that, what they was trying to do, it made me reevaluate the whole uh, prospect of the Corporate, Trans, you know, Cor Corporate Transparency Act, because this is, in my opinion, a war on the common man. This is a war on common people. This is a war that's going to create a lot of economic casualties. Because um, like I said, there, there's someone right now who's forming an LLC and they have no clue that they got to start reporting this stuff. Like you form it this year, you have until the 1st of 2025 to hit that ledger and to um, report your entities. And, you know, I see a lot of people asking, like, I got a trust. Uh, okay, listen to me. If that trust owns an entity, an LLC, a partnership, who's the beneficiary of that trust? Because, see, because you have a trust, the trust that owns these LLCs does not remove you from the obligation to have in the report. I've seen this, like, well, I got a trust. I was like, so what? So because that trust owns those LLCs, whoever is the owner of those trust has to report. And this whole notion, because 
this whole thing with um, secret and private ownership of businesses, something that I got into a little later, and now I'm sitting here like, okay, how am I gonna do this? Which direction are we gonna go in? Because for me, I got until 125 to figure this out before I have to report without getting into any legal jeopardy or trouble. So I'm gonna revamp all my stuff and I'm gonna get rid of the stuff like, you know, the car rental business, that's a dead corporation. So I only have to worry about reporting that because <clears throat> that business is never gonna make any more money since I completely shut it down. And then I have some older holding companies that are not active, so I don't have to report those. And now you got to have a very strategic way of handling your corporations because if you don't, this opens up the door for you to get into trouble and trouble means hefty fines or jail time. And once again, I, I saw your comments talking about jail time and all this other stuff and the government needs money. I don't think it's about the government needs money because when you look at the landscape of small businesses, um, these businesses cannot afford to pay 10, 20, 30, and 40, and 50 thousand dollar fines. They, they just can't. Um, I don't think it's about the money. I think it's about the control. I think it's about setting up this whole process to control people because like take real estate if you're not in that top 20 percent of america or you don't live somewhere that a lot of people don't want to live you cannot afford to buy a house i don't think that this was an economic accident i think this was part of control because when you have a bunch of people who are renters who live in these neighborhoods, who are rental neighborhoods, they actually have no economic power in that neighborhood because they rent, they don't own. The property owner who owns these houses does have that economic power, but the renter doesn't. And uh, years ago, I was dating this girl that lived in this townhouse and she was telling me that they would have these meetings and parties for all of the owners of the townhouses and because she was a renter she was left out of all of those organizations and activities and i was like you know i didn't really think nothing of it when she told me that. i was like yeah you know now i think a lot of it because what's going to happen is as we become a nation of renters as people start to get into this stuff um it's just going to get worse you're going to be left out of the perks and privileges of ownership because this is something um, that I used to talk about quite a bit, and I actually just haven't really talked about it in a long time. Ownership, power of ownership. When you go ahead and you start activating ownership, everything changes. And what I think the new agenda is trying to limit ownership that Americans can have and cut back on the ownership and create a nation of serfs, create a nation of people who have no economic power, who have no property rights because they don't own any property. And this attack on businesses because businesses were the great equalizers. It was funny, I was watching this video uh, talking to uh, Scott Schaefer. He was talking about some of these internet scammers and Business is so good that he was talking about, I'm not mentioning this person's name, he was talking about this person who was in the crypto space who is now in the YouTube automation space. And I've learned some stuff this week. I've learned some stuff that is mind boggling. Um, and business creation, business development, hands down is still the fastest way that you can become wealthy in the United States. And now with this new agenda and this new thing that is happening, it's going to literally cut the legs from under that whole process. It's literally going to, cause you know, like I said, I've, I've been really, really thinking about it. Cause I'm just sitting there like, 
why we have this now and you know like again you know if you watch the videos and you comment i appreciate that but i don't think it's about trying to hurt minorities because i know for a fact that the majority of minorities are not starting businesses i know this for a fact so it is to cut the legs from under the folks who are starting businesses who are creating stuff who are doing things that I think is a very real, real issue. And right now you've got a lot of people like right now, YouTube is hot. YouTube is extremely hot. YouTube is a monster. If you can know how to do YouTube, you can make a lot of money from YouTube. You can make a lot of money from using YouTube to sell things. And I wonder, if there's going to be an attack on YouTube because YouTube is a great liberator. YouTube is a great, I mean, YouTube has made me millions. YouTube has made me millions. So with the advent of YouTube, TikTok, Snapchat, Instagram, and Facebook, I know for a fact, I personally know people who are making six figures a month just for, through content creation. And if you can come on the internet and you could create a business and you could become successful at content creation, uh, I think it's just a matter of time before you're targeted because right now they're going after the corporate structure of setting up businesses. And you know, it's, it's going like, like 2024, I think it's going to be a blur. I think it's just going to go by really quick. And then we're going to start to see the acts and the fines and the, the heavy penalties on this. Cause essentially when, you know, Congress gets together, the Democrats and the Republicans, and they create a law, this opens it up to the court system and the court system opens it up to law enforcement and this opens it up to people going to jail i mean as i sit here and i think about it so you go ahead and you, you open up an llc and you start your business and you don't report and then you get served this notice from the organization that you haven't reported and you got to pay this fine and you don't have the money to pay this fine then you got to go to jail let me explain to you what happens to people who go to jail all right if you don't have a good financial cushion before you go to jail, jail can obliterate your life. Your house could get foreclosed on, your car could get repossessed, your credit can go bad. There's a lot of bad things that happen when people go to jail. So you're out here living your life, running your business, then bam, you gotta go to jail. That is going to create a lot of angst. That's gonna create a lot of pressure that's going to create a lot of problems because like I said, right now, my thought process on this is this stuff is going to be a hot mess. It's just going to keep getting worse and worse and worse. And what you must do is become a fighter for your rights. Because like I've been sitting here thinking like, okay, I got these corporations. They're not working. I'm not going to activate them. They don't have a bank account. I'm not going to worry about them because they're not active and they're not making money. So I don't have to worry about those. And now I got to restructure myself and restructure a lot of stuff because I have a lot of stuff that's going on. And you know, it's kind of crazy why that these laws would be activated. Cause like I was talking about the lady in Texas who wanted an abortion because her fetus has this disease and Everyone in the male community don't think that this baby's going to survive and she goes through and have this birth, it can mess her up. And the state of Texas is like, no, you can't have this abortion, even though it is medically prudent for her to have an abortion to prevent bad things happening to her. So right now, we're in a fight for our lives. We're in, the, in for a big fight for our lives, our, our way of life, and the things of creating businesses and the things that we have to do because um, <clears throat> this this is deep. This this is really really deep, and it makes me wonder who's behind the new agenda 
because I don't think it's the president. I don't think that it's Congress. The president and Congress and the House of Representatives are manipulated. They're puppets. They're used by higher powers. So it makes me think, what group of people want folks not to start businesses or to make starting a business harder? What group of people, and at the moment, I have no answer for you, because like I said, until I really started to investigate this and start to get into it, I had no clue to what this thing held. I just knew that people were talking about well, this new corporate transparency act until I did my research. I didn't really have a clue to what it was going to do, what it was going to bring. Now I'm in it. Now I understand it. And now it is going to get worse. It's going to get much, much worse as we go down here. So we as citizens, we got to arm ourselves. Like once again, I am not going to stop. I'm not going to stop doing business. I'm just not. I'm just going to arm myself and protect myself and make sure that these reports are filed. And then we will see what will happen because an ownership, you know, and I saw in the comments, it's like, this is a war against a non me and having a business. And I think so. I think we are in a war with a non me. You cannot have a business and be anonymous anymore. And this is going to create a lot of issues for people who've been anonymous, who've been nameless, who have trust, who didn't have holding companies, didn't have uh, subsidiaries. And they've been doing this stuff for decades and they're about to be pissed off because there's a lot of really rich people who don't want you to know that they're rich. They don't want you to know that they're making money. They don't want you to know that they, they, they they're over here living their life, doing the best that they can, enjoying life. And they don't really care for you to know what they're doing, how they're making money. They, they have no clue to that. So one of the things that I am beginning to see is there is a there's a power that's pushing this agenda. I don't know the names of it. I don't know who it is, but clearly there's a power pushing this agenda and pushing this whole notion of doing this. And uh, I'll continue to report on this because um, I'm just sitting here like my mind's kind of blown. And, you know, as we as citizens, we can sit here and just take it or we can stand up and fight. So what are you going to do? Let me know in the comments.